Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Shaper, Sales Whisperer, your host. And we've got another guest today, Mr. Nathan Wright. Nate Wright. He's a fellow Air Force Academy graduate. He's at least the, um, man, I guess he's the fourth to have on. I've had um, Waldo Waldman, Never Leave Your Wing Man. I had uh, Chuck Baird, class of 93, a little bit behind me. Waldo's a little bit older than me. Had Nolan Peterson. He was a former combat pilot, Ford Air Controller, turned Ukraine war correspondent. Very cool dude. I think that's it. I think that's it. Had some Navy. Had some West Pointers. Had Kelly Perdue. Uh, He was the winner of season one of The Apprentice. Uh, Had Pete Olson, Navy grad, social media uh, expert, one of the top uh, followed people in the world. So I uh, had some cool names on here, but uh, time to bring the Air Force back in, Nate Wright. Um, and I think you will like the interview. He's a pretty laid back dude. I had to pull some things out of him, then he kind of livened up. Uh, but he has a very matter of fact approach to being a human with email marketing. And, uh, and that's what piqued my interest. Um, come to find out, he's, we're almost neighbors, so we'll be meeting up uh, pretty soon. Uh, he's 30 minutes, 45 minutes away, maybe. So uh, maybe look for some follow-on um, tomfoolery in the not-too-distant future. Uh, but he is kind of behind-the-scenes guy. And it was so funny that, um, come to find out, he designed uh, the cover of my new Infusionsoft book. You know, I've partnered up with Cindy Zuseldorf, and she had retained him. I didn't even know it. Uh, as a designer. So just to put the finishing touches, uh, because it's got to be a rather intricate uh, image, and then you upload it to uh, to Amazon. So he had actually done the work, and he had, he had a copy of my big old 600-page book there on his desk. So it's a small world. Small world. But uh, I think you're in for a treat with, uh, with this interview. Uh, I've got some good notes. He provides some good resources, uh, some Chrome extensions, some things to help get contact info from LinkedIn. Uh, He's got some tips on how to use LinkedIn to uh, build connections, how to get in closer with them, some tips on getting your emails delivered, uh, and how to get them opened, read, and uh, and acted upon. So it's a good interview, um, even though he's a little quiet in the beginning, but it's all good. But you know where I'm not quiet, and that's online. Uh, the Implementors. Come hang out with us. So it's theimplementors.com. So it's like implement and then mentor. Theimplementors.com. So it's a free Facebook group I've created. Um, starting to get a little bit of traction there. Good thing for you is if you show up before it gets too big and you ask your questions, chances are high, you'll not only hear from me directly, you'll hear from me quickly. So come on in, help us build that up, a little um, community to deepen the relationship and to extend the conversation on the things that we talk about here in the show. So it's uh, theimplementors.com. Now let's bring on my Zoomy guest. Nate Wright. Nate, Nathan, I don't know. I I don't know why y'all trick me like this, man. But uh, hey, all the way from Oceanside, California. I mean, I'm probably sticking out my window. I can see you. But hey, welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? I'm surviving, man. I'm surviving. Come on. Cut. (laughs) Cut. We got to do this. Everybody ignore that opening. (laughs) This dude, I I don't know. I don't know. I'm... He says he went to the Air Force Academy, but I know Air Force Academy graduates, and we are much sexier, funnier, uh, better mannered, more optimistic. I think he went to West Point. I think he has infiltrated. So let's try this again. What do you mean? What? What? Explain that answer. <laughs> the answer is I have a 17-year-old autistic daughter who hates me, apparently. I, well, I there you have it, folks. I hate you, Dad. I'm going to... Tell, tell you, I'm going to talk to your mom and tell her how bad of a son you're being. It was, <laughs> he was like, honey, your grandma knows that already. That's yeah. why she kicked my butt out. <laughs> she already hates me, so I'm not sure what else there is to do now. Like, let's just uh, let's, let's pile it on. Pile it on. Man, I have not had that challenge, but with seven kids, I've had almost every other challenge. So I but feel your you pain. Seven kids? So that's why I live in wine country, man. I have to self-medicate quite often. I don't even like wine. More Naval Academy than it does Air Force Academy there, Wes. I know, man. I know those babies like a Marine. 
Crazy times. But it's all with the same woman, all in the same port. What was I thinking? All right. So, dude, what is this, huh? I got I got a couple websites from you. Small Biz Triage. Unapologetically human email marketing. And then you go on to say, where is it? Where is it? It was on your Oh, it was on your notes that they sent me. Something about one of the top five email marketing agencies in the world. Dude, I thought email marketing was dead. Zuckerberg told me that. And Google's YouTube, yeah. they told me that it's all video and social media. So what the heck? I mean, 10 different ways to answer that question, but I'll go with the easy way. Email still works, still makes money. I mean, you, you could talk views, you could talk impressions, you could talk likes, you could talk followers all day long, but email still converts. It still, still turns attention into money. Until it stops doing that, I'm going to keep working on it. Um, so is it just getting a bad rap? Is it not as sexy? Is it not as effective? Why, why do people keep saying email is dead? Because they want it to be dead. Because people flood their inboxes with crap. And it's, it's a stressor for a lot of people. I mean, people associate their inbox with that painful thing. It's like, oh, I've got so many emails to read. And, oh, geez, I lost it in my inbox. And and what? <laughs> I thought you were going to say one more thing. Yeah, you left me hanging. <laughs> no. No, I just... <laughs> So my email popped up in front of me in the middle of a podcast interview. Turn that thing oh, off. It is off. It is off. Uh, it's a stressor for people. It's a huge stressor. So, and, uh, you know, Facebook, you get, you get cool videos on Facebook. You get cool distractions. You get <laughs> Yeah, but you get, you, get, you get political crap on Facebook. So, you know, let's go back to email. So I would say that nowadays, if someone says, yes, send me your newsletter, that level of commitment from somebody is huge. It weighs a lot more. If you wanted to rack and stack all the different forms of uh, commitment a prospect or a customer could give you, email is near the top of the heap. YouTube subscribers is a pretty heavy one, too. Not as heavy as email. What do you mean? Uh, What do you mean heavy? Meaning that it's worth more. Dollar oh, for gotcha. Dollar. Yeah, it's yeah. It's more. It's hard. It's harder to acquire, and it gives you, you know, that direct access. Yeah. Um, so, if people are stressed out about email, does that mean they should stop doing email, or does that mean they should just get better at doing email so they stand out? I would say get better at doing email, and for some people. That means doing way less email. And oh. for other people, it means actually sending more emails. Uh, <laughs> Acing is a huge deal. It's a huge deal. People ask me all the time, what's the best subject line I could use, Nate? And what's the best time of day? And it's like, like they can focus so much on the email, but they don't think about the tempo. Right. And, uh, you know, the concept of ad blindness. You see so many ads, you just tune them out. If there's inbox blindness, too, and people – they have their weekly newsletters or their, you know, their Tuesday and Thursday promotions, and it gets monotonous. It's just like, boom. It's just, it's like a metronome. Right. So you need to break the tempo. There needs to be a little rhythm to the emails. And if you really want their attention, you purposely do the metronome, and then boom, and then shock them with something or send them an email without a link in it. I do that a lot sometimes to break the tempo. And I, I force my clients to stop selling. So let's just let's just send an email out and not sell anything. Let's not ask them to do anything. Let's just say, hey, let's share an embarrassing story. Let's send an email from your dog and have it signed by the dog. I've done that for a client out in Colorado before, and it totally worked. It worked. So, so walk us through that. Temp, break in tempo? No, uh, no from the dog. <laughs> I have a dog. I, I used to talk about Decker the dog. Decker the dog is dead. Now we have Crazy Maisie. Crazy Maisie may be dead if she keeps up her antics, but I digress. So <laughs> Crazy Maisie. So if I wanted to send an email from Crazy Maisie, 
But but Nate, I sell B two B. That would not be very professional. People know that dogs cannot write an email. <laughs> so what? What do you say to that? Boring is boring. <laughs> B2B, uh, B, I've got clients that sell health insurance and trucker insurance and legal services and stuff that is an accounting that is inherently painful and boring. And the, 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 who, who's going to raise their hand and say, send me a professionally, perfectly formatted, grammatically correct email? No, send me something interesting. Either send me something that's going to get right to the chase and is like, hey, I could solve XYZ problem for you tomorrow. Let's hop on the phone. If you don't like me, you can tell me to F off. The direct, right? Or indirect and, and dazzle them or just do something a little unapologetically human. Like, do, you know, sh- sharing embarrassing stories helps build intimacy. And especially for business coaches, business consultants, you need a really high level of access into someone's life to help them. Right. And oftentimes, the people I help, the problem is not their business model. It's not their website. It's not even their emails. The problem is their habits. You know, they've got literary object syndrome. They've got self-confidence issues. They, they have everything written but won't hit send. <laughs> And it's like, you've got this beautiful thing. Just send it. Right. It's not perfect. They don't care. They don't, people don't care as much as you think they care, but they do care about you boring them with boring emails. Right. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned breaking the monotony, breaking the, the, the sequence. Um, you know, I had been settled on the show a while back. He's an email guy and he talks about daily emails. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and he's successful. Uh, how does somebody know what their cadence or frequency should be? How do they know what's right for their business or their industry or their personality? Uh, you ask. They don't know. Yeah. It's like Steve Jobs said, if I asked, you know, if I asked them what they wanted, you know, or he said, like Henry, Henry Ford asked, you know, people would have said they wanted a faster horse, you know, yeah, I don't think but, our, but those people think our customers are, know. That a lot of those people are selling something that had never been done before. I'd never been done well before. A lot of people are in commoditized businesses. So Almost everything's a commodity now, though. Yeah, unfortunately. I would say ask. And if you get a bunch of crazy answers or get answers that don't feel right, you test it. You, send out some, you try it out for a oh, month. Oh, but Nate, but Nate I don't. I, I only send a monthly newsletter. I can't send uh, two emails a week. People will unsubscribe and get mad and go buy from my competitor. No way. I'm just going to do a monthly email. <laughs> As a rule, I try to avoid clients that get mad at me for sending in a couple extra emails. <laughs> do you want to do business with them anyways? I mean, people fear unsubscribe so much. They fear unsubscribe. Unsubscribes are not bad. It gets them out of the sales process earlier. Right, it gets them. It gets them. Kick them out of the funnel now. Right, before they turn into a problem job. I, I've been in business. Today is nine years. I've been in business nine years today, and I've gotten three chargebacks in nine years. And one of those happened this week. And I remember talking with the guys, my business partners, and I was like, "Hey." You know, this guy seems to be getting a little grumpy with us, getting a little cranky. We're seeing red flags. The guys are like, let's just, let's just back out now. Like clearly, clearly it's not a good fit. Like this date isn't going well. Uh, let's, let's be done with it. Right. And and then we'll block him on Facebook. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we didn't. And we paid the price. We needed to kick him out earlier. And people unsubscribing is not a bad thing. Now badgering people are being too salesy. So they click the little abuse report button. That's bad. Right. So that's like someone, that's like being on a date and going so horrific. You're badgering that person, texting them at three in the morning, like the movie uh, Swingers. That, <laughs> they file a restraining order. That's, that's the restraining order and abuse report are very similar. It's not. Yeah, but you know what? So, some, some users should have a restraining order on them. I've had people opt in for something and market a spam the next day. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you forgot that you asked for this? You know, it's like, 
Yeah. What is going on? Uh, and I've, I've called people. I'm like, I'm like, unsubscribe is fine. Why would you mark this as spam? And now sometimes, and I think they're telling the truth, sometimes the email system is gunking up and, and marking stuff. But sometimes I think they're just crazy. Um, but I I, I, gotta com- I, I was doing marketing for a uh, one of the largest online pearl bro- uh, retailers in the world. And they all argue, I have worked for several of them. They all argue that they're number one, but I'll just say one of the top. <laughs> uh, and we sent out a campaign through you know Black Friday because it's a huge time to buy jewelry. And we were pushing the emails hard. And the money, the revenue figures were clocking in. Let's let's keep at it. Let's get, let's keep mixing up the content. Keep at it. We did a break the tempo campaign Thanksgiving afternoon, saying, "Hey, I just wanted to hit pause on our selling. Just wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. No link in it. Picture of the family." Then we hit it again the next day, and that we got an angry, like page long email from a, a gal who's like, "Why did you wake me up at three in the morning?" <laughs> Because <laughs> the, the email notification pinged at three in the morning and it woke her up and she mm. was livid and was threatening lawsuits. And yeah, some people are just crazy. Yeah, they should have a um, restraining order. I told you. I told you. But yeah. oh well. Uh, they are out there. Um, but I do like, I mean, I, I like the, the human approach you're talking about. Uh, because I, I believe email is still alive and well. I, uh, a friend of ours, a uh, young guy, he's, he went to high school with my son, played football with him. He got into CrossFit. He's uh, just a super ripped, shredded kid, and I guess we all kind of were when I was 19 or 20 years old. I was um, super skinny when I was <laughs> <laughs> so, but he So he's trying to create his own thing, right? And so last night he came over and – we built up his Facebook page. We, I got him signed up for MailChimp, so at least it's free to start. Yep. Uh, he, he, did, he just doesn't. He didn't even know the concept of lead magnet to a, a drip sequence. Uh, but you know, I, I got. I, I explained like kind of the hub and spoke. Right? It's like Instagram is fine, Snapchat's fine, Facebook is fine. Maybe you'll find some people. You know, but he admits that the calls he's getting are from younger people that don't have the money. And I'm like. Go find the 35 to 55 year old women. They're on Facebook. They have money. And They'll you're pay. shredded. So. And you're shredded. <laughs> yeah. right? They'll pay. But it's like yeah. all of these things, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, they're on the outside of the of the wheel. The center of the hub is your email list, right? I'm like, yeah. you can own that forever. So you can export that list. You can own it. You know, whereas Facebook will kill you you know, in your sleep and not explain why and never answer your calls. Uh, so yep. it would seem, and I, I'm reading too, you know, Zuckerberg's on, on Capitol Hill today, right, as we're recording this. So they got some splaining to do. Meanwhile, it seems like email might have a little uh, resurgence right now. Are, are, you, are you seeing that with some of these latest um, people you know, usually- hacks and whatnot? <laughs> People usually find me after they've blown all their money on social media. (laughs) Uh, I would say that with the exception of well-crafted Facebook ads, the exception of well-crafted Facebook ads, uh, social media in general is a, you have to have a really good reason to be there. I still use it for certain things, but I certainly, for business reasons. Hold on, hey, I'm my audio here. Why does your microphone keep going in and out? I have no idea. I have no idea. It's like blinking at me. So people, me. so where are you getting your leads? This year, mostly inbound. Uh, Mailchimp Expert Directory sends us a lot of business. Uh, I've been a hired gun on a lot of workshops and webinars and people will, and I don't sell on those cause I'm a hired gun, but people will still find me. So what does that mean? People hire you to create their, their webinar or their slides yeah. or whatever. They'll have me teach it under their banner. I'm just their, their, their guest nerd. Right. So, uh, 
Yeah. So that, that, that see that I can actually, I actually know what I'm doing <laughs> or at least I'm able to fake it so I can make it. Right. And they, they, they hire us. We, we did get more from Google before we've done, a, we've done outbound. We've done our own workshops. We've done tons of different things over the years. We've even <laughs> sent out cold emails to get MailChimp customers and that worked for a little bit. Well, if you send the cold email though, I mean, you got to get that name from somewhere. Oh yeah. That is a, I know, I know we're not supposed to talk politics, but that is digital politics right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the moment, my favorite tactic for, for getting an email address is sending a personalized LinkedIn connection request really soft touch and say, Hey, we should connect for X, Y, and Z reasons. You connect, you get their email address. I was like, Hey, we connected a few weeks, a few weeks back. We should, uh, you know, I've got some business stuff going on here. You got some stuff going on. Let's hop on the phone and talk. Uh, and when you accept a uh, connection request to cough up, coughs up your email, your phone number, all that good stuff, all the goodness. And are you, because you can export it, right? Because you they, they give you a PDF you can download now with their contact info, but you can export. You can it, export it. Right. So we use a tool called Duck Soup, D-U-X-S-O-U-P. Okay. And it's a little Chrome extension that will pull down a lot more data. The LinkedIn export, I think LinkedIn is purposely making it more difficult to prevent people from doing what I'm doing because marketers pretty much ruin everything. Oh, like, yeah. There are great platforms out there. And then marketers like me coming and find ways of exploiting it and hammer the crap out of it until the platform like, Whoa, and they start shutting. Yeah, Cause most people, so I, I've got these little red phone icons next to my name and uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. And that, and that's how I know people are doing a mail merge and aren't, aren't bothering to, to clean their list at all. Because it'll it'll throw in a weird character when I get their email, and so I just immediately delete it because people are so freaking lazy um, they can't even spend half a second cleaning up a contact um, you know that they get for free from LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, everybody immediately pitches. I mean, my inbox is so cluttered on on my LinkedIn messages; it's amazing, mm-hmm. and I'll accept every request. Um, and I don't delete people. I just don't respond, you know, and it's, um, they're not human. Right. Well, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I was asked the other day, it's like, well, what's new this year? I mean, email seems like old technology. Like, is there anything new happening with it? And on a technological level, there's not much. I mean, people right. are figuring out how to automate it and integrate it with other things, but and they've got bots now that send emails, which I think is ridiculous. There's some people crushing it. Someone actually sold me something with the bot the other day. And I'm like, yeah, I, was, I said, that's a really good email, man. It's, oh, no, I hire someone that does bots. The bot got you. And I'm like, what? I'm, I'm supposed to be an expert. <laughs> it totally got me. It totally got me. But, hey, but AI small, is getting smart. It is, but small target lists. So I'll do right. a target list of 20, 30, 80 people. Reason being is if, is if you could go through a list of people that you want to target, little things. Like I like using a company name to personalize something. You know, I work with companies like ABC Plumbing. Here are some other folks I've worked with. We should talk. I might be able to help you out. All right. Schedule here. Now, the, uh, the company name may be ABC Plumbing LLC. So I'm right. scrubbing through that. I'll remove the LLC. I was doing a campaign to college athletic departments for a client out in Colorado. Okay. So some college names are really long. University of California, Los Angeles. So I just typed in UCLA. In some cases, I used acronyms, even if it wasn't their company name. Oh, AIG. Or I'm just going to put in AIG. All right. So that little bit, and it takes maybe 15 minutes to burn through about 100 of those. That extra little bit of work goes a long way. Mm-hmm. It goes a long, long way. So let's go back. You're, you're, you're getting somebody. You're, you're connecting on LinkedIn. You're sending a quick note. Um, you're, they're, they're accepting. 
you then email them or do you send them a LinkedIn message or an email message? I send them a, a, link, a LinkedIn connection request. Right. So it's not but, an, but yeah. Once they accept, now you have their info from DuckSoup yep. or whatever. Yep. So then do you, do you then send them an email? Yes. Okay. So you're taking them off the LinkedIn platform. But how do you know you want to work with them? How, how do you know they're we, we a viable check, prospect? We, well, we target small target clusters. So instead okay. of reaching out to 10,000 people on LinkedIn, which you could do, we reach out to maybe 300 Okay. And of those 300, maybe 100 accept the connection request. So we'll, while we're manually checking those lists, it's like, whoa, that's, a, that's an MLM. We don't work with MLMs as a role. So we take it off the list. Uh, that's a competitor. Okay, let's take it off the list. So we still have – and that's another aspect of the unapologetically human flavor that we love so much is that the manual check, you can't get past it. We still do handwritten cards. What? Yes. Yes. He's chopping down trees that, that house yeah. the spotted owl and the three-eyed toad. What? Now you're aging yourself. Spotted owl, that was like, what, late 80s? Hey, but you know about it. So look, you're aging yourself. So look, don't, I'm just well-read. <laughs> I might grain right? my beard already. So. I'm younger than I look. I'm just well-read on current events. All right? Okay. Good Fair point. enough. I'll, uh, I'll let you take that. No, yeah, mm-hmm. handwritten cards. The thing is, it's got to be hand addressed with an actual stamp. You can't use a postage meter. Right. So, yeah. Um, okay. And so, so you reach out. You send them an email. Yeah. You send them multiple emails. Do you send an email, then a handwritten card? You know, uh, how much is too much for what really is still kind of a cold lead, you know? Oh, it is. It, it goes from like, deep, you know, cold freeze to starting to thaw. Right. It's not quite ready to stick in the pan yet. Uh, we just we use a really soft touch. That's why researching the targets is so important because you could get more specific. So if I'm if I'm people's like uh, Nate, I want to go after manufacturing companies. Like okay, get more specific. Uh, light industrial, get more specific. What location? What region? So if we could get more specific, we we, we could say something like. And then a follow-up email, if I'm hitting San Diego, for example, and so I'm going to be, hey, we connected on LinkedIn a couple weeks ago, I think. And sometimes I'll write that too. Right. I think it was LinkedIn. I do a lot of, a lot of talking. I think it was on LinkedIn and we connected. Anyways, that being that, I'll just push it to the side. I'm going to be down in your neck of the woods talking to this client. I'll name drop the client. Right. Thursday afternoon, I would love to swing by and say hello because I'm already in the neighborhood. The thing is that I'm not pitching anything. I'm just reaching out a human style and saying hello. And the thing is, it's really the hardest part of this style of marketing and sales is the restraint. It's really, really hard for people to get excited. It's like, oh my goodness, I finally got the president of this company to actually take a meeting. That is not a meeting. That is just permission to swing by literally and be like, Hey, I was just in the area. Like, you know, hello, you know, quick coffee meeting that like, and actually keeping your pitch out of the conversation, sanitizing it and just interacting first. It's tough though, because if you've got something cool and they may even give you some buying signals and you just want to jump on it, but having that little bit of restraint goes a long ways, long ways. But Nate, it doesn't scale, man. I need like this Chrome extension. I need to scrape about 17 million names, send the email with a buy now link because, you know, I got a mortgage to pay uh, and I need this all to happen. I I got my high school reunion coming up and I told them by the five-year reunion, I'd be a a 100 millionaire. So uh, if you can't help me with this, why am I even listening to this? Well, it's a red flag client. I just wouldn't take the project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, delusional, I think, is on my checklist. We actually have a checklist. <laughs> have a, the company has a checklist for people that we will blacklist. We will stop them at the front door. You know, we don't work with assholes. Uh, if, if someone looks like they're selling something spammy, even if it's legitimate, we usually, we usually move along. Right. Uh, there's always exceptions, but... They're, they're outliers. They're not rules. In that case, when, when people are in that much of a rush, I usually ask them, 
All right, let's see if we could get 100 people to open this email. Let's start there. Okay. And that's, some, that's something I could turn around tomorrow. Right. I could whip it, grab 100 emails from somewhere uh, just out of their contact list. Let's just email them. Let's see if we could get someone to open or better yet, reply or click on something. Let's, let's just test the waters first. Well, they don't need to scrape all those. Right. Now, I have done those big campaigns before, and there are instances where they could be crazy effective, but you got to get good at sending emails first. It's like someone saying, I want to run a marathon, but they can't do a 100-meter wind sprint down the street without having a heart attack. Right. Yeah. Well, but everybody, it's, it's a hack, a sales hacker, funnel hacker, hack uh-huh. this, hack that. I mean – being human, is, is that a hack? No. <laughs> no. It's a differentiator. It's psychological. It, I, I think I spend more time pondering human psychology than I do pondering technology. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm going back old school. I'm reading older books, you know, Claude Hopkins from 1910 or whatever. I mean, nothing changes. The mm-hmm. technology has changed, but – there's still a human being on the other end of the computer screen and what it takes to pique their curiosity and get them to open, to click, you know, to open, to read, to click, to opt in. Yeah, that hasn't changed. It, is, it definitely has not changed. I would have to say that the little tidbit of psychology that has been most fascinating to me, and I've been able to make people the most money with it, is the idea of contrast how to create contrast in your messaging. Some of it's big picture. That's the break the tempo. You create contrast. Uh, But the simple way to do it is to make the positive more positive and the negative more negative. So you, so you make the positive more positive saying, I, you know, it's the, but wait, there's more. I joke about that, but that, psychological hook is still effective. We're all wired to be like, wait, wait, there's more. It's, it's, we're hardwired that way, but right. making the negative more negative is you're pushing them closer to the fire. Cause usually if, if, especially in the B2B space, you know, it's, they probably wouldn't be talking to you or even, even scanning or digesting the message unless they had some sort of need. So you just need to spotlight the fire. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I know you're feeling a little bit of heat right now, but do you realize it's like, don't you feel your feet getting a little hotter? Don't you feel the sweat start to boil on the edge of your skin? Is that why those infomercials for uh, a thermos has the uh, goofy guy in the car spill his hot coffee all over him? They're making the negative more negative? Yeah, it's contrast. There's a lot of ways of doing it. It doesn't have to be entertaining or comedic or shocking. It's just building contrast. So, I mean, it could be done with, with really basic mundane things. But so, does the, does the long form letter still work? You know, will, will you send a 500 or 1500 word email or will we send a short email to a 1500 word sales page? Uh, yes and yes. Okay. Uh, I found that uh, we just hired on a Facebook ads consulted into the company and she's been getting a lot of success with the longer Facebook ad posts. Like there's a whole lot of reading involved. Like it's not going to fit on a mobile screen, which is usually the rule. You don't want them to scroll. Uh, Some of our long scrolling landing pages are converting better. now for long emails, it really depends on the subject matter and how juicy it is. So I'll save a long email for a a dormant customer or dormant prospect wake up campaign. So these are people that were made it all the way through the funnel. And I I either, I tripped at the finish line because I got too pushy or didn't price things right. Or they went off for something. They went for the shortcut. Oh, I get 16 million emails. They went for the shortcut. So I'll send a, I'll send an email ad. It's it's my, one of my favorite people ask. It's one of my favorite subject lines. It's been ages. I just throw like 18 A's in there. Ages dot, dot, dot. And then I'll launch into, Hey, it's been like a gazillion years. It's probably my fault that I haven't stayed in touch with you. Here's what I've been up to. And you share the highs and the lows and the dramatic and the scary and the painfully boring. And so what are you up to? (laughs) 
<laughs> that's in that email. And then that, those can those can run a bit long, but you need to give people some specifics, a little something to grab onto. Right. And I, I find that that being able to share, like here's my epic. People want the epic fail. They don't want the the overnight success. The epic fail always wins. Um, yeah. And, but somebody listen to this in, in a B2B, are they going to, you know, but that doesn't work. The, you know, I'm selling to the C level. Yeah. They don't want to hear all this. They're busy making C level decisions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I hear that a lot. Now up at the executive levels, emails need to get shorter. You got to be really good and really have a great relationship with your prospects and clients to be able to get away with a long email at that level. Okay. Uh, some of it's industry based, like people in marketing and sales could handle longer format stuff. Right. I like reading longer emails. Some of my favorite newsletters are, you know, 500, 750 words easily. So, so selling in the B2B space, I mean, selling to the C level, do you, do you get into that much? And Yeah. So we, so you're still keeping it human? You're just keeping it uh, shorter? Yep. So th- that's where the research comes in handy. So opening up, so, so okay, say we've got a target list of 100 CEOs. Let's make it more specific. Let's say CFOs. You've got this like accounting SaaS platform. You want to sling to some CFOs. Woo. Right? Sexy. You want to go waterfall style, throw some jargon at waterfall style and start at the CFO so they'll kick it down to the director to, t- to take the demo and then buy it from you, right? So it's a common sales tactic that actually works. I've used it plenty of times and it works. So when you're sending that email, you need to do your research. So for those 100 prospects, it might take you five minutes to pull together that list, depending upon what kind of database you've got your hands on. And it may even be your own database. But I might spend three, four, five hours filling in little personalized blurbs in every single one of them. Sometimes I'll just send out the emails individually and not use software. But if I do use a platform, one of the, one of the columns in that spreadsheet is going to be that personalized blurb. You need to prove to them that you've done the, that, you know, hey, I want 30 minutes from you. I've already given you 30 minutes because I've researched you. I've done my homework. I've, I've, I've drank your Kool-Aid already. So there needs to be, if they see that, that psychological, they don't, may not think that in the front of the head, but in the back of the mind, all right, this doesn't look pre-canned. I'll even on those, I typically recommend people turn off their open and click tracking as well uh, because of the higher level executives and in the bigger companies, they will flag anything that has that long URL for click tracking or oh, has yeah. the, has the, the open pixel in it. Right. So I'll turn it off. If I really want them to get it, I'll turn it off. So, um, so yeah, cause that I was going to ask you about deliverability. Yep. Cause people always want to blame the technology. Oh, it's Infusionsoft's fault. Oh, it's Entreport's fault. And it's like, well, I think it's your crappy emails fault. I mean, have you, have you seen one way or the other? I mean, are there uh, bad deliverability platforms out there? Infusionsoft used to have awful deliverability, but over the past couple of years, they've fixed all those problems. Another deliverability is great. The uh, MailChimp deliverability newsletter platforms, as a rule, are not going to have amazing deliverability. I do not use MailChimp for B2B sales. I may use it for nurturing or, uh, you know, actual news, you know, press releases, things like that. But I use a platform like Mailshake or like a G- uh, different sorts of Gmail add-ons to push out B2B em- emails in smaller batches. Yesware is a good one uh, because it's using Gmail servers and Gmail has a great deliverability. That's on the nerdy side. On the human side, spam trigger words. There's tools out there that will tell you if you're using spam trigger words like uh, Glock apps. Is one of my favorites. That'll what tell you Glock apps. So G L O C K apps. They uh, it's pretty cheap. It's like thirty bucks or something, and 
it's a tool where you'll be able to find out if your email shows up in a spam folder or in a promotions tab or an updates tab. Right. So you're able to jigger with the emails a bit to get them through. And it'll let you know, hey, this phrase triggered this spam filter on this email server. Right. And it, a lot of it's words like opportunity uh, is a tough one. Sometimes the long URLs are picked up. Right. Uh, and it's a, it's a rotating list. The fact is, is that's why the shorter emails at the C level work better and turning out the click tracking works. Right. So, but phones work still too. So if you really want to get a hold of them, you can also call them. Oh, but Nate, then I get their voicemail and I get their receptionist. I get their executive assistant and they put me into their voicemail. They never call me back. Don't even get me started. I think voicemail is awesome. What, what? Yeah, I love voicemail. I love it. Why is that? Gives you a chance to pitch use inflection. You know how hard it is to put inflection into a written word in an email? Uh, I do all caps, and uh, I make it uh, blink in um, a neon pink with a, <laughs> with a yellow shadow. And, oh, I the, and the MySpace, it, the MySpace glitter. <laughs> and I underline it in green. Yeah. I've gotten those emails too. No, it, it gives you a chance to use the inflection. There, there's a guy that I work with who, uh, if he's maybe midway through the, through the funnel and they're stuck and they just, they're, they're dodging the meeting, he'll actually record a video, a little six minute video. Just give him the pitch. Hey, I know you're super busy. So here's my pitch. Here's my deck. Here you go. Compress right. it all down to six minutes because I respect your time. And being able to add the contrast, you know, right. rattling things off. I've worked with boom, 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 boom. Pause so you're saying back. he sends a video. So it's still an email, but it's a video embedded in the email. Not embedded a link. So I'll just right. send him a link. Right. Attaching an email to a an, – attaching a video to an email is just a – another way to get thrown into the spam filter even a one-off but uh yeah i'm I'm not saying add it like as an attachment as an mp4 but like i work with some software called consensus you can make the video and then embed it so it shows a thumbnail kind of like youtube right and so so that that preview image is there to kind of they're like well those work those work great those work great yeah I'm i'm a huge fan of that because because it's hard your, your competition's not doing it. They're right. all looking for shortcuts. So if you're able to find a way that, okay, it's going to take me an extra two hours this week, but it's going to bump up my conversion rate 20%, done. That's an right. easy decision. Yeah. Easy decision. Everybody's looking for just so simple. I mean, I, and I, it's a lie, right? I see these people, mm-hmm. their pictures of getting on the jet, you know. They're, oh, yeah. They're being driven in a Rolls Royce while they're in, you know, Daisy Duke, cut off blue jeans and flip flops. Like they go out of their way to dress as crappy as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, sipping a fruity drink uh, on the private jet. And then there they have a laptop looking at the infinity pool at the sunset oh. um, over the oh, over yeah. coconut trees. Uh, and they're like, you should be here. And then there's a meme or some inspirational quote from, I don't know, Oscar Wilde. And, uh, and it's like, it's crap. Yeah, I mean, one out of like a hundred thousand people maybe get there, but like, why are people afraid to work a little bit? Yeah, I I like my job. People's like, "Hey, you're working too hard." It's like I actually like what I do. Yeah, I like doing it. Like, if I'm working on a really, really thorny project, something that's like I sink my teeth into, it's hard. Because a lot of what I do now, I've been doing it, you know. I've only been doing it for nine years, which in internet years is like forever. But I've I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of campaigns. When you put in that many reps, sometimes I'll just go into flow state and not even know what I'm doing. But if I'm working on something that's really hard, I'll you know, I'll stay up late working on it. Like that's the kind of work that I want to do. Right. So yeah, that's the problem though, because people, you know, old people like me, we're just so smart. I mean, nothing's hard, man. I mean, what, one day you're going to get there. One you day keep, you'll get you there. Keep, you keep you know, struggling there, grasshopper. You keep your nose to the grindstone. Um, 
All right. So look, I was going to go back because you were mentioned customizing mm-hmm. and having a column that, that, that personalizes uh, the message. Would it be something like maybe what college they went to or high school they went to? So you, you got can it. find you got that it. on LinkedIn and, and there's, just there's that no, in? That's why it's hard. Right. Because it's different for everybody. If they're published anywhere, it's like, hey, I just read, meaning that you may have skimmed it, but I just read your interview on Forbes magazine, the part about this blew my mind. Anyways, here's who I am. Here's why I'm reaching out to you today. I just want, man, I just want, brother, I just want the chance to earn your business. Right. Top of the phone for like, for like 15, 10, 15 minutes. Right. Now, worst case scenario is, is I'll let you make fun of me a little bit. Let's talk. Right. You know, personality. And now that's, that being said, you still need to write how you talk. Oftentimes people ask me to write templates and I said, Hey, read it out loud to me. It's like, why do you want me to read it out loud to you? I said, because I want to see if it sounds good coming out of your mouth. Right. If I, I'll see them biting on words, just like just chewing through the gristle. And I was like, okay, clearly we need to reword this for you. Right. It sounds sweet, syrupy sweet coming out of my mouth. But if it's not something you'd say out loud to another human being, you probably shouldn't write it. Like how often do people, you say goodbye to someone say, sincerely, they write, founder, small business triage. Do people like close out conversations that way? Sincerely? Uh, if they're British. <laughs> <laughs> but they also put a U in favorite. So, I mean, they're kind of messed up, man. Yeah. Except Ollie. Ollie Bilson, when you listen to this, uh, not you, man. I love you. Okay. You know, I, I love all my British friends. Um, so, so would that be a column, though? Would that be for a blast? Or that's like a one-off message you're sending? No, that'd be for a blast. So if you, if you choose the right, t- right thing, uh, if you choose the right target, it does make it a bit easier. So you still need to manually check it. The thing is, you could hire it out. I had a client in Georgia who was selling NASCAR sponsorships. Yeah, baby. Yep. And he was trying to get more craft breweries on board. There's some craft breweries. They've got some serious coin. They got money to burn. And they're going up, up against the big three, Anheuser-Busch. So, uh, AB is the biggest one, but you know, Coors, all the, the big three. And he wanted to get their attention, so he had his, he had his intern – I did some research on these guys and, and fill in one line about how badass they are. Right. In this section of the spreadsheet. And the intern spent like a day on it and he went and checked it again. Okay, it looks good. They put it into the email platform. He got four meetings with the top 10 breweries in the country within the first week. Wow. Because he took a little extra time on it. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Yeah. Making it human. I love all these people. They want to be like Gary V and they think they just have to walk around with white earbuds in and cuss a lot and talk about football, but they forget how we started, you know, and it was that customization. It was the personalization. He'd reach out and call people and, you know, he worked on the floor of his family's uh, liquor store. You know, he knew his stuff. Yeah. And would work with them, and and he was constantly monitoring social media, engaging. So well, that, that story about what was it, the yogurt company that hired him? This is before Vayner Media started. Someone hired him for like a social media campaign, and they ran the campaign. And it was like a TV commercial, and he they hired a room full of people just to respond to tweets or people that actually used the hashtag to personally respond to every single tweet that had the hashtag. So they were working on it like a team of like 15 people for weeks right? on setting up personalized responses. And I've reached out to some of my, you know, entrepreneur hero, you know, I'm a bit of a fanboy with certain folks. I've not reached out to Gary V yet. Uh, but I've reached out to a handful of others and when I get a personal reply, it's just like, it feels pretty badass. Right. And now that guy's got a fan for life. I'll buy all of his books. I'll I'll preach the gospel of that dude or that lady for a decade, mm-hmm. just because they they or somebody <laughs> spent thirty seconds hit and reply. Right. Very cool. So, what are you working on, man? What do we? Um, where do we send people? Uh, 
Inbox Attack is the latest, the latest project. That's I told you before I was a hired gun, right? For a lot of folks, and when you put in that many reps, you learn a few things along the way. But guns are so mean and evil, and uh, so you were you were a hired. Um, I don't know. Police baton? I guess that's not good either. You were a hired pillow. You were you were a hired chihuahua. Yeah. Okay. I take, I All take right. Hired gun. I'll it. To that. Let's go with that, man. <laughs> hired chihuahua. I, uh, so I learned some stuff. And one of the things I learned is the importance of reps. So people spend money on courses. They go to workshops. Uh, the you know, smart business owners, smart entrepreneurs are gobbling up all this, all this content. Very few of them actually put in the reps. It's like watching YouTube videos of, of how to do those really crazy handstand pushups and never actually doing any handstand pushups. They just gobble up the content, but don't put in the reps. What? Yeah. You mean I'm not stronger because I watched that video? Mentally, maybe. I feel stronger. Yeah. Strengthens right. in the mind and some other now you tell me. postcard bullshit. Uh, <laughs> now you tell me. But with an inspirational poster, that's, that's where I was going. There you go. Anyways, uh, Inbox Attack was a way for us to, to look at the core problems. And most of the time, technology comes and goes. And people oftentimes talk fine, but they write in such a boring, boring way. And it's like, man, you just need to write like you talk. Right. With a little bit of restructuring, sometimes just a little reordering or – you know, making the positive more positive, the negative more negative, it helps. So we decided to build out a training program that is completely live. People hop in once a week and groups of 10 folks max. We, all, we talk for maybe 15 minutes demonstrating, hey, this is how you write a better subject line for a reactivation email, for example. All right, everyone hop into the Google Doc. Here's your here's your your prompt. Start writing. All right. So the start writing, and then we'll we'll pick it apart. We'll pick it apart right there in class. Wow. And so it, it's it's been a little harder than expected, just because that the, the social pressure that's created in that a lot of people it terrifies them. It yeah. terrifies them. Uh, but it's something we've done a lot privately, so we're unleashing it uh, this month. Inboxattack.com. So we'll see how it goes. It might totally, it may be one of those things that I was like, I oh, remember Inbox Attack. That could have been so great. But <laughs> I'm putting in the reps. I'm being human. And the, the worst thing that happened is it'll be a damn good story later. Yeah, I mean, from the name, I was thinking, you know, some type of program. Um, I guess, like, as I think through this, it makes sense that. You're helping them attack the inbox, but I was thinking it, it was like something you were doing for them, but you're teaching them how to attack the inbox, how to infiltrate the yeah. inbox, right? Yeah, get into people's heads a little bit. Right. It's I've I've been sold many times off super cold emails. I've even been closed. I've spent real money on products people slung to me that somehow ended up on my spam folder. Yeah, and I did through my spam folder every couple of weeks. So I was like, "Huh, that's interesting." Pull it out. I was like, "All right, I'm game. I'm curious." Right. You know. So for, for psychologically, for me, curiosity is is a is a smart trigger. So if you want to sell to Nate at inboxattack.com, use the curiosity trigger. It'll probably <laughs> work. <laughs> for the people, other people, it's other things. I mean, cold email is is like online dating. Right. Correlations are exactly the same. And it's also just as heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm getting ignored. <laughs> well, I stopped dating way before things got online. So I'm going to take your word for it. It's awful. Last time I tried, I think it lasted about four days <laughs> before I tapped out. So it's funny. So a friend of mine, actually a classmate of mine from the Air Force Academy, she uh, lives in San Diego and she was going through some personal issues. And so she, I was like, come on up, come drink some wine. So my wife and I took her out to one of the wineries and hung out for the day and I uh, had lunch, came back to the house and 
she showed me, it was literally the first time I'd ever seen like Tinder or those. Oh. And I'm like, what's this swipe left, swipe right? And she's showing me cause, cause, cause like, she's this beautiful woman, right? Smart, uh, successful. And, uh, and I'm like, why aren't like guys beating down the door? And she's like, well, let me show you what the options are. <laughs> and, was, and these guys, I was like, Oh yeah. Just turn that thing off. <laughs> just <laughs> log out, put the phone down. Like, that's online dating. Uh, oh, that's depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, the whole thing is depressing. Oh, that, I mean, God. that's the thing is, is that inbox attack was was initially supposed to just be a boot camp because we wanted to get people in the room. Right. But apparently, modern culture, people are really afraid to get into rooms with other people and work on hard stuff together. So we had to come up with a gateway drug. So we're going to, we're going to try this out for a bit and <laughs> if we can upgrade them to cocaine a little later. <laughs> nice. Well, I will link to it here in this episode. So I'll be watching from afar, but uh, let me know how it goes and uh, I'll, I'll get the word out for you as best I can. I appreciate it. All right. Nate Wright all the way from Oceanside, man. Well, I don't go to the beach much, but I'll come to the beach. I'll give you a call. We'll bring some beers. We'll um, Don't drug me, though. And um, we'll do another podcast, do some riding. Who knows what? You can come up here and drink some beers in Temecula. Deal? Tem- Temecula. The sun <laughs> shining through the mist. That's why voicemails are better than email. That's you it. You that email the sun shining through the mist. You can't you do can, that in an email. You can whisper to them. Uh, the, are you branding right now, Wes? I feel like you're branding right now. I might, I might be. All right. <laughs> well, let's wrap this up. Nate Wright, right. Inbox Attack, founder of, what is it? Small Biz Triage, right? Uh, that is correct. There you go. All right, man. Thanks for coming on the show. It's been great. All right. Cheers. What did I tell you? I told you it was going to be good. Be sure and go back and check out the notes. Check out the links to the different things we talked about, the Chrome extensions, the way to uh, check your spamminess of your written content. Those are good tools. I've already downloaded them, and I'm trying them. Uh, I don't mess around. I'm usually pulling things up while they're talking. One of the benefits of doing the interviews. Uh, but, hey, be sure to check out uh, The Implementors. Come join us, theimplementors.com. That's a way to carry on the discussion, the dialogue. It's free to join. So come hang out Uh, and be sure to check out uh, Nate's course. Even if you listen to this, if it doesn't work for him, like I said, he's trying something new. Um, If it doesn't work, reach out to him for some copywriting help. I do uh, some copywriting work, uh, usually as a bigger part of an overall package with a client. Uh, But if you need a little bit here and there, I can help. If you need big stuff, um, he's your guy. You know, give him a shout. Uh, But check out the course. If it's still going on, having that type of accountability can really help. And working with different people, working in front of them and with them can really help. It's why I do jujitsu. It's why I've uh, continued to stick with it, even though it's hard, even though I go a couple of hours, you know, four to six days a week. Going with the different types of people, young and old, small and large, right? Tall and short, male and female, all these different body types, everything from, you know, white belts to black belts. We all learn from each other. Uh, and, and having a well-rounded group like that helps you round out, um, you know, your smooth out your, your weaknesses, right? Get them better because somebody's going to attack you in a different way. You know, a, a five foot, Eight hundred and forty, hundred and fifty pound man is going to attack me different than a six foot three, two hundred fifty pound man who will attack me differently than a five foot eight, hundred and forty five pound woman. And you need to know how to defend yourself against all of them. And uh, so check out his course. You know, doing doing that in small groups, writing and critiquing. It'll be scary for you at first, but I promise you, it'll be worth it. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. All right, you got to be bad at first before you can get good. So check it out. Go try it. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Then you'll get better and better and better, and then you'll be good. All right? And if you want to get good as well for free, join us again, theimplementors.com. If you need some help on anything else, how to pick the right CRM, give me a holla or go to uh, bestcrmforme.com. Take the free quiz. 
You can schedule a time to talk with me. We'll go over the answers, see what really is best for you. Other than that, you know what to do, right? Go sell something. <laughs> <laughs>